Oh, snap, snap, snap. The world is finally waking up to the crap that's baked into and sprayed on kibble dog food. No longer can commercial pet food manufacturers fool us with pretty pictures and false promises. This is the raw dog food truth. The view and opinions expressed on this podcast are not intended to replace medical advice. Before starting any raw diet, do research, ask lots of questions, and consult your vet. Well, hello, Raw Feeders. I'm Dee Dee Mercer Moffat, CEO of Raw Dog Food and Company, where your pet's health is our business, and we're friends like my friend, Dr. Andy. Doesn't let friends feed kibble, now do we, Dr. We Andy? do not. We do not. Right? Right. And we, and we really try to help people find the best avenue to keep their dogs with them here on earth the longest. Yes. And what you do absolutely does that. Yes. I'd be animal chiropractic for all the new people. That's right. Dr. Andy is an <laughs> animal chiropractor, but she doesn't do this ridiculous snap, crackle, and pop. I just saw another, uh, there was an article that came out in August of last year where you've got this pit bull it's this picture of this this chiropractor he's got this pit bull standing up you know with his arms all mm-hmm. back and he's like popping a human and yeah i think they said what was it it was some astronomical number that people were really really mad at this guy because i mean like he pops this dog's neck and then he growls I, i've never seen a dog or heard about a dog growling at you Oh, yes, you have. You've been here. Not they get like a that. little angry. They get a no. little instantaneous, like, hey, and then it's over. So, no, I haven't seen that one. Um, I haven't heard that growl. There are different growls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do they actually growl at you after you pop them? After you pop them. I'm sorry. I don't like that word because I don't ever hear a pop. No, don't they ever... don't. They don't make any cavitations. No. Or oh, very that's a rarely. New word. I don't know this word cavitation. Yeah. That's those popping noises that we make a lot of when we get adjusted. And it's just gas built up in the joint. It's and like so, your joints farting. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what that is. And we can call it just cavitation. Um, no. <laughs> so it actually isn't a requirement for a good adjustment. We just, as people, we like to hear and as chiropractors, we like to hear the pop on people. I've gotten way used to, we don't hear anything with the animals or every once in a while, I'll hear a little, like just a little click and that'll be it. What is the deal with the gas in these joints? I mean, how do the gases get in the joints and is it a bad thing to have gas in the joints? No, just, I, no, I, I actually have no idea. On this Monday morning, I, I'm going to go with, <laughs> I don't know how they build up in there. It is not a problem. It's just what it does well and we've all gotten up off the floor or gotten out of bed and it's pop 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 too right as we're moving so i know i was telling you we're doing the 75 hard and one of the things that that rick and i do is this ab workout right um along with uh yoga we're doing yoga as well um but when i take my knees and I take them both to one side and, you know, do that stretch. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I just barely move my knees, I can hear this Mm -hmm. all in my back. I'm like, what, what is happening? You just self-adjusted. And when you're doing that and you're moving and you're stretching and you're doing yoga and stuff is doing that, that is fine. Um, I'll have clients occasionally, the humans, the parents that take their chin and adjust their neck. And I'm like, um, if you continue to do that, which I recommend you don't, don't do it in front of me. (laughs) Because in humans, the way their carotid arteries run, you do not want to be forcing your neck in those angles to get that to crack. Um, Pop, adjust, cavitate, blah, blah. But what does happen is you get addicted to the neurological feedback after that adjustment. Oh, yeah. So you that's get, why you get addicted to the sound or the feel no, or the... No, the neurological feedback, the actual chemicals that are released from the adjustment. Wow. So yeah. what that's chemicals... why it feels so good when you go. You get endorphins released, you get, you know, you get dopamine, like it, it stimulates the nervous system and so it releases hormones. Um, and so when you self-adjust your neck, your fingers, 
right? People adjust their fingers. Um, there's no proof that that will cause arthritic knuckles, by the way. Um, but the angle of the cervical adjustment when you're forcing your neck, however you do it, if you're one of those folks, mm -mm. Um, is not good on the vasculature. Um, and you do not want to be stretching those um, veins and arteries in your neck like that. You know, Addicted, we did. So you feel like you need to be adjusted uh, again and again and again. So we had someone that I think we've talked about this before, a customer who went in and got adjusted and then she passed out in the kitchen mm -hmm. and was in the hospital. And I, and I, I, I don't really know what the outcome was, but it was okay. after this adjustment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we there, have, to, I think we did talk about yeah. this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we can have, unless you're doing a carotid, uh, an actual artery study, you may have placking in that carotid artery that you are unaware of. Mm. And you go to the chiropractor and they adjust your neck and possibly it disrupts a plaque in there. There's no way for us to know. There's no way that you knew unless you actually we're working with your cardiologist. And if you have that and you know that, tell your chiropractor. <laughs> so unfortunately, if anything generally is going to go wrong, go badly, you know, not work out well, it's that. And we get in trouble for that, even though there's no way that we could know. We've tried to come up with orthopedic tests that would tell us, and it, they're just so unreliable that there's really no way for us to know. So yes, unfortunately, people have come in, gotten adjusted, and yes, passed out through a clot, were Ooh. injured. But dogs don't have plaque in their arteries. Well, they that... yeah, they, they haven't started doing that yet. I mean, they they pretty much have gotten every one of our chronic diseases so far. Right. 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 We don't seem to have high cholesterol, although I've been noticing people checking their cholesterol more often. Now we don't have the placking that we're aware of yet with them, but they pretty much have gotten every one of our diseases. So I'm waiting. Right. So, like, so Andy, why do you think that they've gotten every one of our diseases? Because of the food we eat and the food they eat. No. And the lifestyle that we live, that we make them live. I actually think the dogs that are just left outside in the backyard probably are overall healthier than living in our homes. They're Ooh. out doing dog things okay. out Do in the sun, out um, digging, yeah. digging, you know, they I just something I've been mulling over. But yeah, dogs don't have placking and then dogs anatomy, the way the the carotid artery and the vasculature runs, it's it's different than us in their cervical spine. You do this thing every morning. I wanted to ask you about this. You take the dogs and you take yourself and you go outside prior to sunrise. Tell us about that. Why do you do that? And we watch the sunrise come up um, because it sets the circadian clock in your head in behind your eyes. There's, there's a super chiasmic nucleus behind your eyes. And that is your super clock for your body. And so Every morning we go out and we set it with the sunrise. So my body knows what time it is. So my body knows this is the time for um, cortisol and thyroid hormone production. And it actually knows, okay, this is when we, when I'm going to need melatonin later. So it helps my sleep. Um, I take the dogs because why the heck not? Most of them have to go potty again anyway, even if we were out earlier in the dark. Um, and now that it's cold here in Colorado, I've gotten even weirder. No, they, no. Yep, yep, gotten weirder. <laughs> I take their coats off when we go outside in the sun and they put the coats on when they come in the house. So now they wear house coats because we want the sun. We want the full spectrum sun on that fur, on those Milano sites, telling the body what time of day it is, not just at sunrise. We try to walk and then we do, we do a morning walk to get morning sun before 11 a.m. And it, that sets our circadian rhythm. So you you can't just look at a watch and tell what time it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can, but my body will still not know what it is. Right. Okay. So we go outside to set the circadian rhythm. rhythm. Do you have to stay out there for a certain length of time? 
Um, five to 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And do you wear a coat or do you go out naked? I go out, <laughs> I go out naked. <laughs> Even in the cold, I've been out. So I can't say I've been making five minutes. I've been about three minutes and I'm like, all right, it's cold out here. But the cold is actually very good for you too. It's cold, called cold thermogenesis and your cells actually really like it. It actually produces more water out of the mitochondria and keeps you better hydrated. So yes, my dogs are out without a coat, without shoes, in the snow, walking in the cold. I actually want them cold. Okay, let's talk about when they come back inside, Dr. Andy. Why do we put a coat on them when we come back inside? <laughs> I didn't know we were going here today. You know, um, look, I don't prep. I don't prep any of my guests. I know. No, I we just, don't. I'm you just all like, know that by now. You know, show up and we're going to have a conversation. Because I want to protect protect that same fur, those same melanocytes from the blue light toxicity of our TVs, our computers, our overhead LED lights. It's the blue light toxicity. And if you listen to Dr. Jack Cruz, and if this is at all interesting to you, go check him out, Dr. Jack Cruz, K R U S E dot com. He will talk over your head like nobody else I know. It's amazing. But his his basis is we are blue light toxic from our computers, our TVs, our lights, our LEDs, everything, and we don't go outside. And that is the cause of all of our chronic diseases. Well, I, I would have to agree with that. And like I was telling you, we're doing the 75 hard right now. Two workouts a day. One must be outside. Yes. Has to be outside. And it can't be, you can't go like skiing or, you know, that it has to be a workout, whether that's walking, whether that is biking, um, whether that is taking your weights and go outside, but they want you outside. Yeah. And, you know, when we really look at what they used to do in the hospitals, when people were sick, what would they do? Fling open the windows. They yes. wanted that fresh air coming in. Now, whether it's fresh or not today, I don't know, but, don't know, but... they want you outside, right? Because yeah. there's so much stuff going on in our house. And this so, was, yeah, go ahead. So one of the worst places to ever get better is in a hospital. Right. It's blue lit to high heaven. You're hooked up to technology. They don't let you sleep. It could be why a lot of our health workers are just so ill too, because that's what they're working. They're not, they're not working with their circadian rhythm. The nurses that work overnight, the doctors that work overnight shift workers have notoriously been very, very sick because of this. My best friend, her mom uh, went into the hospital at Christmas and she said to me, she said, she's got ICU delirium. I said, what, what is that? They have and a she, name for it now. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Well, we got to name everything. Dr. Well, Andy. we do. I, I, I don't doubt that. But ICU delirium. I said, what is that? And she said, they wake them up constantly. They can't sleep. And I'm like, you're in the ICU. Mm -hmm. What is going on here that we have? Well, they got to check their blood pressure yeah. and they got to check their, you know, oxygen uptake and they got to check this. And, you know, sometimes I, I want to say, what's the lesser of two evils here? It, I mean, yeah. literally where her mom is just staring into space because she is so sleep yeah. deprived. Yeah. This is so if, so if she's there and they can get a window open. I mean, oh, that would, I, you it, know, you got to wonder. I don't know those, if those windows even open. Right. right? Because I, I bet not. I, I bet, bet not. not. <laughs> so if you're, so this is, this is what I'm delving into. This is what I'm questioning. This is what I'm looking at. I don't have all the details by any means, but mm -hmm. if you have a chronically ill dog, get them outside for a sunrise. Even if they end up laying in the dirt, laying in the grass, laying on concrete, all of those are grounding surfaces. That's excellent. Don't put a coat on them. Don't put shoes on them. Um, cause that interrupts the grounding and get them out there. It's free. It may be not as easy as you'd like it to be, depending on how big your dog is, but add that into whatever else you're doing with your animals. What the hell? And let me know. <laughs> right. You know, well, and, and let's not confuse not putting shoes on them if they're in the snow for long periods of time or it is super cold, right? Because don't you see- You're going to have to use some common sense. Right. Which I know is said, not so common, but- Right? You just said you don't have them out there that long. This is very different, guys, than taking a dog on a long hour-long hike 
in, you know, freezing temperatures and, you know, now Rick would say with Lazi, as long as she's moving, you know, her feet aren't yeah. getting. Yeah. Well, and that's, I'm going to go use your common sense, but I just took torch who has no legs and the poodle. And we did an hour walk on snow and they were fine. They, there was no shivering. There was no holding up feet. We were moving the whole time. And hell, I was in shorts and a tank top. You should have seen the looks I got because it was only like 33 degrees out. Um, and you did an hour. Yeah. It was a little, actually a little much for me. It was a little much. But because that cold really got, I mean, it was cold. <laughs> right? And you're 30 um, minutes out. You got to come back. You're yeah. like, I got to go back. Yeah. So they did fine, but they are very young. Um, the poodle is used to doing all he, we go out every day cause he has to, not everybody goes out every day in my house, but he has to, and he he's used to it. So use some common sense. Um, if you have a dog that like, um, Asta was, yeah, you probably still want to get a boot on that foot to protect it. Right? right. Like, but, but when you put those rubber soles down, you eliminate their grounding capacity. So if you have that senior dog, you want, you're like, Hey, why not that sick dog? Hey, let's get out and see the sunrise. You're out there for the five minutes. Don't, don't bundle them up. They're okay for five minutes, mm -hmm. but you want them on concrete, grass or dirt. Asphalt does not ground. Rick goes out in the mornings and uh, walks barefooted mm -hmm. around the, around the property. Mm -hmm. And um, so I may have to institute that this year you know, mm -hmm. getting my, now I do, I go out and I, I'm on the asphalt. And so I'm like, ah, that's so cold. And then I remember I can't uh -huh. get my, <laughs> my, my flip flops on. Um, yes. So I want to ask you one more question before we uh, head out today. When, when you said that you feel that dogs are probably doing better out in the backyard than they are being pampered inside the house. <laughs> what, what did you mean by that? Because of the blue light toxicity. Okay. Because of all the, to the toxic light in the house, all the computers, all the LED TVs, all the electric non-native EMFs we have going on in the house. But Especially you also in said at one time, you feel that dogs are narcissistic, not narcissistic, but they're, they're, they're not, um, they're unwell because we have pampered them too much. They're not being dogs anymore. Mm-hmm. You feel, you feel that that's still true that they, they get, you know, fed when they want that. I have to work for the food. They've got these chinchilla beds. They've got these. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, they were in their coach collars. Well, yeah, a mine are no different folks. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but you know, if you travel to third world countries and you, and everyone's like, oh, the dogs just break my heart. I'm like, every one of them I saw running around had this big ass smile on their face, being a dog. You know, and they get fed over here when they, they know what that time that family eats and, you know, and they go over here for this and yeah, they're covered in bugs, but yeah, they don't care. You know, like they're not people we've turned them into, you know, small children essentially. Right. Um, and I, I do wonder, I don't think we'll ever know in this country, it, you know, those outside dogs. And I'm not saying the ones that don't get fed, don't get watered hung up to a tree on a chain that and it's you know the collars eating into their neck we've all heard the horror stories i'm not talking right. about the horror stories with stupid people um but 30 40 years ago that farm dog was outside all day mm -hmm. that farm dog probably slept outside in the summer all night long to keep an eye on things those working dogs you know your ashbach that are used to 30 below want to be outside and we have we have decided that that is not proper they need to be in the house with us and they need to so th i think that is contributing us pampering them us bringing them in the homes which i said i do torchy sleeps in my bed like right. i'm right there with all of you um that that has l added to their decline in health overall. well i think that one of the things that maybe we might want to think about for 2024 uh pet parents out there is don't wash your dog so much 
right? Maybe you don't oh, take please. them to the groomer so many times. Maybe you don't freak out when they eat feces because I'm reading Dr. Brady's mm-hmm. book right now. And, and when you really look at the dog's ancestors, uh, feces is a, a, an important part of their diet. So don't freak out so much on that. And if they bury a bone, so be it. They can, you know, bury it and bring it back up. Mm-hmm. Or if they vomit and decide to eat it, that's okay too. So there's a couple of things that maybe we can just allow these dogs to do. Let them sniff a do- another dog sphincter. It's okay. They're just talking, right? Mm-hmm. They're yep. just talking and walking. Yep. Let them be dogs. Let them be dogs. That and 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 I think that would take a little stress off our pet parents too. Yes. Right? Oh yes. Yeah. Especially the feces eating. I'm like, eh. And they're like, what? I go, you may not like it, but it's it's fine. <laughs> right. It's totally fine. they I'm, I'm it. happy when I find some fresh elk poop on our walk. <laughs> Have a, have a few, have a few nuggets. Let's go. Right. And Sean's just dying. My husband's like, ah, I'm like, it's fine. They're supposed to eat poop. That's right. Poop eaters. All right. If you guys would like to work with Dr. Andy, I highly recommend it. If you have a dog that's limping, it's not walking right. It's not sitting right. Something's just not right about that structure. I would definitely get a consult with Dr. Andy, get a video, hook up with Zoom, and she can really talk to you about what she has seen over how many years you've been doing this now, Dr. Andy? Over 20, going on my 21st year. 21st year. I would say- Started very, very young. You did. You did Mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. 14. And (laughs) so I'm going to say, get your dog over to Dr. Andy, sign up with her, get a consult before you go down the path of surgery. Okay? Because that's where a lot of dogs end up going. And that is really, really expensive. Okay, let's don't do that. Get over to rawdogfoodandcompany.com. Get your dog on a species-appropriate diet. I forgot. Find Dr. Andy at Animal Magic Care. Animalmagiccare.com. Cute site over there. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to the Raw Dog Food Truth. We will see you next week. If you have any questions, send them right here. We will answer them here on the podcast at rawdogfoodandcompany.com. Your pet's health is our business. And what, Dr. Andy? Friends don't let friends feed kibble. That's right. We'll see you guys soon, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.